Have you ever noticed how coffee or alcohol, if you drink alcohol, seems to affect you less over time? Perhaps you've heard someone being referred to as a hardened drinker. Perhaps you know somebody who can consume far more drinks than you can and not seem to be affected. Or perhaps you know of someone who's been taking, for example, pain medication for a chronic condition and has started to say that on a particularly bad day, his tablets just don't work anymore. Each of these examples is an instance of tolerance. Simply put, tolerance to a drug means that over time and with repeated use, larger and larger doses are required to achieve the initial experience. These effects wear off with repeated use. So you need to drink more coffee to feel like you did when you first started drinking it, to feel that buzz. You find you need to drink more alcohol, and you can drink more alcohol without becoming drunk or feeling intoxicated. Or you may find that you need stronger and stronger doses of painkillers to relieve your discomfort. Tolerance shows how the brain strives to be in balance. It constantly adapts and changes so to function in a way that we can act and feel normal. A process called homeostasis. And when we talk about homeostasis occurring in the brain, we use the term neuroadaptation. Over time and with frequent drug use, our brain adapts. So much so that it's only in balance, that is, it's only functioning normally, whilst the drug is present in the brain. When the drug starts to wear off, or when we try to stop using it, our brain's no longer in balance, and we experience an uncomfortable syndrome of signs and symptoms. And these signs and symptoms we call withdrawal. We experience them as the opposite of the effects of the drug. Those of us who have ever had a sugar rush, you know, when you've taken too many lollies and you know that for a little while you're, you're giddy with excitement, you're buzzing. But then as it wears off, you start feeling groggy, lethargic and maybe even a little bit depressed. Quite the opposite of the effect of sugar in the first place. Now, if we take a drug that makes us feel euphoric or high, then the withdrawal syndrome will be experienced as dysphoria or sadness. It's always the opposite. In the context of addiction, if you take the drug, you'll stop those symptoms immediately. So if you're starting to feel sad, you just take the drug and bam, they're gone. And this can motivate continued use.